my name is Richard Anthony Pritchard, I'm 49. I work with the Welsh Highland Railway in Porth Madog, Gwynedd. About five years ago I started having procedures done for Barrett's esophagus. Well, let me rewind a bit on that. About 30 years ago I started having acid reflux. It um, affected my life. My name's Andy Moore, I'm a consultant gastroenterologist here at the Royal Liverpool, uh, which is part of the Liverpool University uh, Hospitals Foundation Trust in the northwest of England. I've been a consultant here since uh, 2015 and I've got a practice in upper GI disease, especially upper GI cancer and advanced endoscopy. So we've been using Barrex uh, RFA for the treatment of dysplastic Barrett's esophagus now, I think since about 2010. I couldn't eat what I wanted to eat, I couldn't sleep when I wanted to sleep and um, I was going to the chemist and getting Tums and I was getting other medications for it which were masking it. This happened for a long period of time when I finally went to the doctors and um, I asked them for their advice, why is this happening? They immediately put me on the drug called the Meprazole which obviously is another drug to mask what is actually happening inside. So. Um, about three weeks after that I went back to the doctors and I asked them if I could cover the camera down. They agreed, I went to Bangor and about six months after that all of a sudden I was in Liverpool Hospital with um, cancer. Uh, prior to the introduction of Barrex RFA for the treatment of Barrex esophagus uh, patients in the distant past were restricted to either a strategy of watching and waiting even in the setting of already quite advanced disease and with all the risks that that entails, or also proceeding directly to risky and major life-changing surgery. So the introduction of ablative techniques, endoscopic techniques, has really changed the landscape for those patients. And of all of those techniques, radiofrequency ablation is, is arguably the most easily used. It's certainly proven to be very effective and it's durable. And so it's the, it's the first choice for, for patients with dysplastic Barrett's these days. When I was masking it, um, taking Tums and other various things, every time I used to go to sleep at night, um, I used to have acid come up into my throat here. So I had to prop myself up on a couple of pillows. Um, I couldn't eat what I liked, I couldn't drink what I liked. And that carried on for a long time. It was a nasty experience, it was burning, and this carried on for quite a period of time. Unfortunately, I didn't have the information at hand in the start and not many people do that as acid travels up and down your throat it changes your skin especially around the esophagus and over a period of time the skin can change to abnormal and then on from that to cancer. I got called in to see the doctors and strangely enough I saw um, a young gentleman called Dr Moore and um, he told me I had a Barrett's esophagus it mutated and it gone over to slight cancer they'd found in the biopsies. Unfortunately things were changing up and down my throat and um, I wish I had the information at hand back then, 30 years ago. So Richard was referred to us from his local district general hospital in North Wales. He'd been referred to them by his GP on the basis of long-standing symptoms of reflux. Um, and he's unusual in the sense that he was found to have uh, Barrett's esophagus with an abnormality on that first endoscopy so he wasn't in a surveillance program when he was found to have dysplasia. His first endoscopy I think yielded high grade dysplasia on biopsy and he had a repeat procedure in Wales when a, a visible lesion, a, a nodule at the bottom of his gullet was described and then he was referred to us for assessment in Liverpool. When I first started having my procedures in Liverpool I finally told my family what was wrong with me and of course they were all worried but they all had confidence in the procedure I was going through. Work stood behind me throughout it all. I never took much days off sick. I think after each procedure, I took a day off. That's how mild the procedure is. Actually, a second visit to us, we, we resected another area of nodularity. We always make sure, we tell our patients that we take away any lumpy or bumpy bits before we proceed with ablation. And that second uh, secondary section just yielded a bit of dysplastic Barrett's esophagus. So that from there on he went on to have his, his Barrex radiofrequency ablation. I think his first procedure was, was performed with a 360 device, so that's a balloon with a, an ablation catheter wrapped around the outside. And his follow-up ablations were done with focal devices, so small catheters clipped onto the end of the endoscope. 
and so we completed his ablation after that. Well, I'm still here now and that worked absolutely fantastically. Um, I'm still on a meprazole, but obviously it's not masking anything anymore and there's nothing going on inside which could um, get worse, obviously um, hurt me later on in life. So it has been a, it has been a strange, strange voyage, but without the fantastic people in Liverpool, um, who knows which way we would have gone.